Here I have a little suspect male, Flamingo chylus uh, species. Let's see, this is a Flamingo chylus species arboricola, and it used to be known as Lampropelma species Borneo black. And this little guy should probably be hungry because I've seen him out quite a few times later at night. So let me grab a dubia for him and give him a male dubia that's um, not, not too big. He might not come out and might just end up letting it go in. Oh, I see him. He's coming. He's coming. All right, and you can see he's uh, kind of black, he's kind of brown, and the females are black. Now we're gonna go on to the next one. And in this enclosure, I have a scorpion species that is really small, well, relatively, relatively petite scorpion species called uh, Peroroctinus boreus and this species is found in Washington, Oregon, Montana, and the United States. A lot of people don't even know that there are scorpions here. So uh, these like to be along sandy beaches but in the rocky areas uh, near freshwater lakes in high deserts. And if they if they stung someone, it would be like a bee sting. And a lot of people probably do not even know that they were stung by a scorpion. I would imagine that they're just playing um, in the sand or by the rocks and, and sunbathing or whatever, and they get stung and they never see it. And they probably think they just, they just encountered a bee. Uh, so it's pretty amazing. A lot of people don't know that we have scorpions here. I did have two of these. Uh, I do believe this one is a female and I think that maybe she, I don't know if she ate the male. I thought she was pregnant. She got really big and then he died and I can't confirm that that's what happened but he did die and so then just she is left. She seems to be doing really well, eating well and yeah, she's out a lot, comes out a lot. She's a little bit skittish. I mean, I don't handle her. Uh, she, she feeds on um, small dubias. Let's see if I can get her. She's just a small scorpion overall. For her setup, you can see here I have a shallow water bowl. I have some freshwater clam shells. Um, some rocks, freshwater snail shells, uh, this piece of, uh, this is a dried sage, and there's some pleat clay, clay rock, and some cork bark, and she's got this interesting, um, I don't know what you'd call it, it was some kind of critter, critter rock, it's made out of plastic, and there's a hole she can climb into if she wants to, although she doesn't seem to go in there. But it does make for a nice little landscaping feature. I did get that on sale. Now for her, what I'm going to do is just drop a couple of the smaller dubias in here. Because the dubia that she had looks like it's been hanging out and it grew up. So I'll put a little ones in here for her to hunt when she's ready. I never really see her catch anything. She usually just runs away from her food. You can see she just made her way underneath the rock there and she's gone. But I know she's eating. She 
looks she looks good all the time so there we go on to the next one in this enclosure to have a mature male Pteranochylus murinus or the orange baboon tarantula he's probably not going to come out and if he does he's going to be a little angry i didn't really see him at all when he was um, smaller and he just started emerging once he became a mature male and he also uh, displays the typical what you hear of the obt behavior that he is pretty high strung and he will uh, strike at just my reflection sometimes so i haven't seen him eat either since he matured he's just refused food or struck at it and so I'm gonna do a little maintenance here for him and give him something to eat make sure he's got a little water um, sprayed on his web in case he's thirsty because these mature males do drink a lot of water I'm gonna give him a juvenile dubia He's just going to leave, is what he's going to do. I'm just going to spray right there. You can see he's ready. He, he, you can't really see him, but I can. And he's positioned his legs in a way that if I were to reach my finger in there, he's ready to strike. I don't know if I can get a view inside of his burrow where you can see how he set himself up. There we go. It's kind of blurry, but that is how he has positioned himself in case I should bother him. And there's the roach, which I really doubt he's going to eat it, but I wish he would. In this enclosure, I have a mature male. Um, let's see, what is he? A Heteropoda boi? And this is the Lichen Huntsman. No, the color is not really showing up well, but he's, he's a very much a Lichen green and a kind of a reddish brown. Very, very pretty little guy. I don't think that he'll eat, um, but I can always try and see if he's hungry. Hopefully we don't get him bolting away. He looks like his abdomen is nice and full. And that just ran away. He wasn't interested. If he's interested, he's going to be really, really quick. And this one does, has really calmed down since he's matured. You know, I've been able to just pick up the bark with him on it. And obviously, you know, I have the lid wide open. He's not darting around or anything. But don't let that fool you because <laughs> he could probably just disappear right now and hide on the curtain for the rest of his life and I'd never find him. In this enclosure, I have my Haplocosmia Himalayana. This is a tarantula, old world tarantula species who... Um, is from the regions in Nepal where there is a high elevation so kind of like the foothills of the Himalayas she's very pretty hopefully we'll get to see her maybe she'll come out for us I don't know I've seen her out a little bit so that gives me hope if she's hanging outside at night probably looking for prey Let's see if I can coax her out Whoa, <laughs> that kind of spooked me. I was like, I was just thinking how she tends to be so much on the shy side. And I'm like, okay, she's so shy. She's probably not going to come out. Maybe I should just let it go. And then boom, she just, she just nabbed that roach. I noticed I've been forgetting to tell you their names. Um, so 
This one is my Carabina Versicolor, and this one is known as the Fuzzy Genius. And she recently became a mother. That was um, during late winter and early spring. Uh, I did find the Carabina Versicolor slings to be a bit of a challenge. The incubation was difficult. I lost quite a few, um, probably more than half. And that was, that was pretty disappointing, you know, to have that happen. But there were definitely survivors. And uh, so I have sold some of those. I have about four left. She has rebuilt her, her tunnel here. It looks really nice. She had, um, I mean, it had been destroyed in the process of getting her egg sack. So I'm very happy to see that she's put it back together. And I'm suspecting that it probably took her a little while to gain energy back to do that. She hasn't eaten a lot uh, recently. I think she's just been recovering. But I've seen her out the last couple days, so I would be willing to bet you that she's hungry. Give her this little old male dubia. See if she'll come out the top here. I don't want him to break away and run off because that happens all the time. I see her shadow, I see her reflection, so I know she's moving around in there. Here she comes. Oh crap, no. I don't want to lose him. I always do that. For some reason, my grip doesn't maintain. Okay, here she comes. Yeah, look at her. Kind of dark, sorry. With the ring light, maybe a little too close. There she is. She's gonna have a good meal. And I'll turn this around so we can look at the other side. Okay, here's the pretty girl. She's just built a spectacular web tunnel here. I love it. It's in an L. L shape. Let's see if I can get a better view of that. Yeah, see that's it's pretty big. Nice size tunnel. She's been in this enclosure for a couple years and it's been working out really well. It's uh, probably like a semi truck display case uh, that I made. There's a tutorial on how to make it. So far it's held together really good and she seems to be happy here. Okay, on to the next one. In this enclosure, I keep a mature male Neoholothele Inse olive. And as you can see, the last roach that I gave him perished in, in the water bowl. This little guy matured quite a while ago. He's fathered a bunch of babies. The female has passed away. She was part of the communal that I had with the babies. Um, I'm going to look up the exact date that he matured. Um, so these were, they were bred together. He was, he was paired on the 9th of August, 2019. He matured into a mature male on February 9th of 2019. Oh, looks like his roach is alive. So yeah, February 9th, 2019 is when he became a mature male and almost a year to the date it was actually well let's see no that wasn't quite a year August 18th 2018 he was 0.75 inches when I got him I got him at a show in Albany Oregon from Dean's tarantulas so he did mature quite a while ago and he's still going but he just does not eat I mean he I have not seen him eat at all, um, so I'm surprised that he's still around. He definitely, you know, he has his water bowl. There he goes. He's he's probably not going to eat that, but I am going to leave it in there. 
Let's see if I can't capture a picture of him for you. He's in here. There he is. Using for him. His name is Sasha, by the way. He's been in here since he was quite small. There he is. Uh, his, his abdomen has has uh, withered quite a bit, but he doesn't. I mean, he doesn't look. He doesn't look terrible. Some of the larger species they seem to go downhill a lot faster than he has. So I'm kind of impressed with his longevity. And in this enclosure, I have my female Flamingo Chylus species, Rufus. She was um, not really rehoused, but I did clean out her enclosure because she she seems to be one that likes to poop a lot on the glass. And she'd been in here for at least a year, so it was definitely time to redo everything. She's not happy at the moment. Um, I watered her plant, and she turned around and started, uh, looks like she's threat posing in there. I don't know if we can see her. We can try. The problem, because there's this, this enclosure is an exoterra that I got on the inter um, on Craigslist and it has water damage that I haven't been able to scrub off. Um, I might be able to shine a light in there, molt in there, because of her posture, because I hadn't done anything except you know, filled her water bowl and gave her plant a little water and she was in threat pose, I could see. Okay, here she is, Flamingo Chylus species Rufus. I can try to feed her. I'm not sure if she'll be hungry, but we can definitely give it a try. Let's see if I can get a roach down inside of there. Um... And her name is Boostfeel. Boostfeel is a Welsh name, a Welsh word for basically for monster. Well, this is a very blurry, pixelated view, but we can see that her fangs are spread, and that means that she is not going to hesitate when she bites. She has very pretty reddish orange setae extending out as a fringe from her her body and then beneath that she has um, a lot shorter setae uh, that is actually very pinkish brown and she has the tiger stripes on her abdomen a very 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 beautiful tarantula Okay, <laughs> we're not going to disappoint anybody, are we? <laughs> yes, I jumped, even though I knew what to expect. 